Jessie J is one of the best vocalists to come out of the 2010s. However, her powerhouse vocals haven't always necessarily translated to powerhouse success and viability. Jessie J first began to gain recognition by writing songs for other singers, most notably the Diamond Certified staple, Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. However, her journey to pop stardom was not all easy. She was once signed to a label and had to start all over again. I was signed to Gut Records for two years and I wrote over a hundred songs. My album was done and the single was ready to go. Then the label phoned me to say they had gone into liquidation. So I went around the UK labels trying to get signed, but they weren't interested. They said they didn't get it and didn't think they could work with me. A lot of girls were about to dominate the industry at the time, and I felt I had missed my chance. But when someone slams the door in my face, I tried to find a bigger key or chisel to try to break it down. I knew that wasn't the end of me. It was the beginning. She continued, I flew to America as a songwriter to forget about all the crazy stuff that was going on. Within two days of the showcases in New York and LA, I found myself sitting with the head of every label in the US. There I was sitting with Clive Davis, who signed Whitney Houston and Janis Joplin. I signed and flew back to the UK, where everyone suddenly loved the idea of signing me. I got to choose and went to Island Records. I'm so thankful. Do It Like a Dude, her debut single was released in 2010. The song was offered to Rihanna and inspired by Rude Boy. Ultimately, Jessie decided to keep the song, and it was a fairly big hit throughout Europe. Price Tag was truly the song that put her on the map. It went number one in over 15 countries. It's an R&B flavored pop song with the message of not being so materialistic. It's insanely catchy, and it's quite easy to see why it took off during that time period. Eventually, her debut album, Who You Are, was released in 2011, a month in advance due to how popular she was becoming. The album was a pretty big success and would sell over a million copies in the USA and the UK each. Who You Are is a pretty general 2010s pop album and very reflective of its time. However, Jessie J's natural vocal ability does give it an extra notch of power. She had a handful of hits on this album, including another one of her signature songs, Domino, going top 10 in both the UK and the US. The song shared sonic similarities with Katy Perry's Teenage Dream, However, that only seemed to propel the catchy tune to becoming her biggest solo hit in the US. The album also houses one of the best ballads to come out of the self-empowerment pop era of the 2010s, the title track, Who You Are. Jessie J really sells the ballad with an intense and highly emotive vocal performance. She continued this era with European hits such as Who's Laughing Now and Laser Light. Who You Are and Who's Laughing Now respectively taking on anti-bullying and inspirational topics. Her second album, Alive, released in 2013, was a step down for Jessie not only commercially, but artistically. It was accompanied with a beautiful, bold, platinum blonde, bald look. Although Jessie was sure to always give a great vocal performance, the songs lacked the catchiness of her earlier work, even though the sonic direction itself didn't differentiate much from it. Alive didn't receive much promotion in the US and was even delayed. The album wasn't even internationally released like her first record, which was a setback. Alive coincided with controversy that Jessie J fueled when she stated her bisexuality was a phase. She later clarified that she was young and exploring her sexuality, and that she supports the LGBT community. Speaking on the lack of success Alive achieved, the talented singer said, I'm very aware of how Alive sold, which is why right now I'm working on new music to be put out ASAP. I'm a businesswoman as well as an artist, and I'm aware Alive didn't do as well as who you are. But that doesn't mean I'm a flop, it doesn't mean I'm not talented. It just means I have to reevaluate what's going on in my life and what I can improve. It's funny that people tell me like I wouldn't see it. One year Saint Laurent is the biggest selling clothing line, and the next is D&G. You can't be the person at the top all the time. Her label didn't have faith that the album would do well in America, which is the reason they didn't release it in the States. The version of Alive that was supposed to be released in America, featuring some tracks that Jessie supposedly worked with Pharrell on, eventually turned into her third album, Sweet Talker, which had a massive hit tagged along to it, a collaboration with Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj. Jessie has stated that she recorded the track first, and then Nicki and Ariana jumped on it. Bang Bang was a return to form for Jessie's empowering pop roots. It also helped her showcase her amazing vocals alongside other talented women. It received critical acclaim and was one of the biggest female collaborations in a very long time, becoming a mega smash hit included on Jessie J's and Ariana's albums respectively. 
Talking about Sweet Talker, Jesse said, I allowed other people to come in and push my control and make me uncomfortable. She says, After my second album, I'm not afraid of the pain. Sweet Talker was her attempt to break America once again, and with Bang Bang she achieved that, although the album itself wasn't big commercially. It achieved two more moderate hits called Burning Up and a slice of her signature empowerment pop balladry, Masterpiece. In 2015, she would achieve another worldwide hit on the Pitch Perfect 2 soundtrack with the CN Sam Smith co pen track, Flashlight. After Sweet Talker, Jesse J went away from the spotlight due to some personal health reasons. In the two years that I did The Voice in Australia, I was diagnosed with some health issues that I'm not ready to talk about, that I had to really face as a woman. In 2018, Jessie partook in a popular Chinese singing competition that she would go on to win. That same year, Jessie released her fourth album, Roses, in four-part EPs. The album certainly features some of her best material to date, and isn't overbearingly generic, like some of her older material, which Jessie J actually admitted that she doesn't like some of it, because she wasn't allowed to do what she wanted to fully. You only have to listen to some of the records that I put out to know that I had to dilute my voice. You know, as a young woman in the industry, when it's very predominantly driven by men, um, you know, you're, you're kind of put into this space where it's like, you know, we need you to sing it like this and you need to wear this and you need to do that. And I did it because I was naive and I was young. I hell no now. And I, no, 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 not today. You gonna learn today. No, um, so yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I mean, I can't even listen to some of the recordings that I did. And the reason I've realized that I was kind of, again, going outside in and not inside out. My shows are inside out, even whatever song I'm singing, even if it's a someone else's song that they've written that I sing. In that the way I've recorded some songs and the way I sing them live are not the same thing. And so many people realise that because people were not stupid. She released a Christmas covers album in 2018 as well. In 2020, Jessie was diagnosed with a disease after losing hearing in her ear. I woke up basically what felt like I was completely deaf in my right ear. Couldn't walk in a straight line. This is really not important, but I got told I have mini ears syndrome. I know that a lot of people suffer with it and I've actually had a lot of people reach out to me and like give me great advice. I'm fine though, no, I'm good. Everyone's like, I'm so sorry, it's fine. It could be way worse, it is what it is. It just threw me off. Like in, on Christmas Eve, I was literally in the ear hospital like going, what is going on? But I'm glad, grateful that I went early and it, you know, they worked out what it was real quick. Um, I got put on the right medicine and I feel much better today. I'm super grateful for my health. I've just been laying low in silence. That's the first time I've been out to sing and actually bear it. You can hear that I'm not very good at singing loud yet. I just miss singing so much and being around anyone. <laughs> but I just wanted to wish you guys a really merry, happy holiday Christmas season. Um, it's 1am right now and I'm like ready for bed, in my bed. And I've just given up caring at this point in making any kind of effort. So this is what I, <laughs> this is what I look like. <laughs> That's it. I'm glad she's doing better. Jessie previously mentioning her artistic creativity being suppressed is what I feel might have led to her not being even bigger than she already was. Jessie J has a bold and powerful voice and can sing most pop singers today under a table. However, she never really established an artistic identity outside of her hits. There's nothing in particular you can associate with Jessie outside of her voice. She arrived in the age of Katy Perry and Rihanna. They both managed to make a specific lane for themselves, while Jessie just seemed to sort of trail behind what they were doing. But now it's known that she didn't have complete say over her direction, and she finally appears to be stepping away from the super general top 40 hits she established her name with. Not to say that those songs are bad, because Domino, Price Tag, Bang Bang, Who You Are are generally songs that are well-liked, even if they aren't the most distinct, 
They serve their purpose well and with an always stellar vocal performance. Jessie J is a great singer, and I think it'd be refreshing for her to truly move towards music that amplifies her voice, but also allows her to show her artistic freedom.